Hi Witchlings, welcome back to my channel. It is your local Chaotic Witch on here, and today we are having a long-awaited video, a very requested video. I'm going to be talking about veiling. I am coming from this conversation as a pagan who veils, who covers their head. I'm wearing one right now, and I ask that you keep that in mind that most of my information will probably be most... I'm, I'm, I'm the best at researching pagan sources, and although I research other sources for this, I am not going to have as much knowledge in the areas of other religions or, or cultures merely because I am not a part of it. Before we get into this, um, I'm going to give you a little overview of what we're talking about. We are going to talk about what veiling is, veiling in different religions, veiling throughout different historical periods and why it was done. We're going to talk about why some people veil, what were some of the reasons, and we're going going to talk about why I veil and my veiling in my practice. Before we begin, I'm going to start off with a quote that I found while researching. It's by Hiba Fanag. Whether asking a woman to put on the veil or forcing her to take it off, the result is the same, an assault on her religious freedom. The lesson of the hijab is to embrace diversity. This particularly is talking about the hijab and it was an article talking about Islam and Islamic veiling, but I feel like this quote is applicable to so many areas. I have been told that in the past that I am pretending to be oppressed by donning a veil, um, which is very interesting to me that people see my head covering and associate, associate it with I'm attempting to be oppressed. Um, I don't know why the veil is linked to oppression. I honestly believe it's, you know, Islamophobia and racism. But yeah, I figured that's a very good quote that everyone should keep in mind, especially when we're talking about veiling in different religions and veiling in religions where individuals are exposed to a lot of religious prejudice like Islam and uh, Judaism. So to begin, we're going to talk about his, some, some historical veiling and what it was used for. Um, I have a few things here. We're talking about, um, we have the ancient Roman palette and pallium. So the ancient Roman palette and pallium, I struggled to find a lot of information on it. I found more information about the Greek hymnation. But the pallium was worn by women and the pallium was worn by men. It is a garment and the garment was sometimes used to cover a woman's head. And I do believe that the Roman palla has some overlap with the Greek hymnation and the reasons why they wore it, but I'm not 100% sure just because Rome colonized Greece and then took a lot of their traditions and culture and stuff. So yeah, in ancient Greece we had the hymnation worn as a sign of the home outside the home. And what I mean by that is that it was customary of matrons to veil in Greece between 550 and 320 BCE. Respectable women in classical Greek society were expected to seclude themselves and wear clothing that concealed them from the eyes of strange men. Veils also protected women against the evil eye. It was a cultural custom for modesty and it was seen as an extension of the domain of the home. Um, and when we really look into it more, we can see it as like the hymnation was, in my opinion, a way for the women to kind of be, be able to go out and do things and not just stay in the home 100% of the time. In the Middle Ages, we had two veils that I found that were present, the wimple and the henin. This is what a wimple looked like. It's very square, very big, and a henin was worn by wealthy women and fashionable women, so this is what it is. I do believe that in the Middle Ages, um, the type of veils that were worn and the type of elaborateness and fanciness put into a head covering signified status to a certain extent. Um, so we see veils in history, you know, using status. Um, and I'm Italian American, so in Italian veils we see a lot of traditional Catholic veils, medieval Italian veils they did a little differently. They would cover, leave most of the hair uncovered, just kind of wrapped, use ribbons. And yeah, and then this translates into modern veils. We see, you know, the religions and cultures that use veils as part of that religion or culture, but we also see bridal veils as a modern veil that is widely accepted, as well as mourning veils as a veil that is widely accepted. There is some history behind the bridal veil as like, I'm, I think it may be modesty, but also the evil eye. It definitely came from other ideas around veiling in the medieval ancient times. We're then gonna talk about different veiling in different religions. Of course, we have veiling within Islam for modesty, um, but that can be translated differently from person to person. We obviously have the hijab, the burqa, um, 
I don't know enough about Islam to go into every single type of veil that Muslim women wear and why they wear it, but if you are Muslim or Islam and would like to share your experience with head covering below, I would love to hear it. I'm sure that my commenters would love to hear it. Also, hi, welcome to my channel. I know that I know there are a few of you who follow me. Hi, I love you. I appreciate you. We have the Roman Catholic veiling within churches, which was very customary up until recently. My mom said that she, when she was a kid, that was still very much a necessary thing, and that's typically a nice little lace veil, um, just covering the head like this, also picture. And then we have the Jewish chikol, shittel, and which is a wig worn over the hair, and schnut, worn for modesty and requiring, and because married women are required to cover their hair. I looked up the pronunciation for tickle and schnut, Sheetal, I could not find uh, for some reason. So if you, if I'm pronouncing that wrong or pronouncing any of those other words wrong, please let me know. I will correct myself. So I'm just going over the three major religions that I know of to wear veils. There are obviously other religions and different parts of this religion that may or may not require veils for different or somewhat different reasons. Um, within the modern day kind of pagan sphere, I have seen a lot of different reasons for why people veil. I do have a master list. It was made by Rebel Child on Quora. It's spelled S-H-Y-L-D-E. Thank you, Rebel Child. Um, so there are a lot of reasons. I'm going to go through all of them. This is not necessarily just for pagans, but I have seen a lot of pagans with these reasons for veiling. As a reminder, with a connection with a deity, this can also be any veiled deity. We can think of Hestia as one. There is the veiled one. The veiled one is a, I believe, a Celtic deity. Maybe the Kaliak. I'm unsure. An offering to a deity or doing it for a deity because it was requested by a deity. As a reminder of spiritual vow, dedication, and obligation. As a reminder of what is above us, creating a barrier so the head is not in direct contact with above. To cover slash protect the crown chakra. To help with grounding. A lot of people report less exhaustion and fatigue when they cover their heads as they believe less energy gets lost from there. For shielding, which would be in reference to empaths, to focus power slash the mind, as a physical reminder of the importance of nurturing the mind, to signify adulthood slash womanhood, preserving personal power, giving the person a sense of control, in order to practice modesty, as a symbol of status, like a crown, to ward off negative spirits, wedding veils were originally worn to this effect, to feel beautiful. Other reasons separate from paganism, medical or otherwise. Um, an example of that is uh, if you're losing hair and choose to wear a veil. In older traditions, a witch's hair was said to be her power, especially by its length, so those practicing witchcraft might keep it covered. Well, I kind of botched that one. Whoops. Because it brings comfort to the person, because they consider their hair to be a gift from a deity slash deities. For those who veil only during rituals, it can help put them in the right mindset. The veil slash ritual mindset and association they'll start making without having to think about it. So those are like a master list of all the reasons. Oh shit, that tea is so good. Uh -huh. Anyways, so of these kind of reasons, I've met a lot of people who fit within those reasons for the most part, um, and they are that that list is focusing more on pagan veiling. But so personally, in my practice, veiling is a very large part of it. Um, even if there are days where I choose not to veil, it has still become a part of my identity and something that I try to do rather frequently. So I originally started veiling about a year ago, and I just started, uh, actually almost two years now. Almost two years, um, I started veiling close after I began on the internet. I used it as a form of shielding. Um, for some reason, when I put it on, uh, it helped me disconnect from other people's emotions more. It helped me uh, with my headaches, which I do not know if that's because it's covering the head or it hit a pressure point in the back of my neck, but I was having really persistent migraines and headaches at that time and it would relieve them, um, which was 
amazing so I continued wearing them <laughs> but I just started with bandanas very simple bandanas like this one you can see a few pictures and um, I typically will wear the veil out of the house sometimes I will wear it in the house if I'm wearing a particular type of veil I will wear it all day in or out of the house um, because you have I, I do like a cotton bandana pin it and then put it on it's like a whole thing it's not just a throw on and go um, and some examples of that full thing with the two strands are here. Um, thank you, Sally. Um, and I originally started veiling just because I felt like I needed it. And then from there, it moved into doing it in honor of a goddess I was working with, Floya. Um, because to me, the veil was signifying taking care of myself and putting myself first and putting my energy first. And that was something that I could offer to Freya. I continued veiling um, throughout the good portion of my time with Freya. Earlier this year, Freya left me, I stopped working with her, and when I stopped working with her, I continued veiling. And this was mostly because at this point, it wasn't just something I did for a deity anymore, it was something I did for myself. It's become a huge part of my religious and spiritual practice. A lot of times, what veiling now symbolizes to me is to represent my connection with any divine beings I'm working with which is right now Luciferus, Hades, and Diana. I'm worshiping Hades. And also to give myself a sense of protection in a way. I am more comfortable when my head is covered. When I have something covering part of my hair, my neck area, um, something like that, it has just become a blanket for me um, in a lot of ways. So I guess I could fall under like preserving personal power as a reason why I veil. Um, it definitely helps me with grounding. Um, a lot of people do report less exhaustion and fatigue and when they cover their heads, whether that is you know a subconscious thing or a metaphysical thing. To me, it doesn't matter because it works. But it's also, for me, become a reminder of my spiritual path. In a way, it has become representative of my dedication to my gods, my deities, and my dedication to witchcraft. I can't explain fully how it became that, but it has become that for me. It's become something that I do as part of my spiritual practice for other reasons, but also to represent my spiritual practice. I definitely also have a lot of veils with embroidery in them um, that work as protection blankets, whether they are sigils. Um, I can show you an example of that in a second. Sometimes, and it's also to ward off negative spirits a lot of the times. <laughs> Um, I feel like that definitely falls under it. I do feel more beautiful when I veil. Even though I love my hair and I love my haircut, for some reason I just, I'm more comfortable when I am covering my head, whether that is with a hat, veil, um, hematian, etc. It does bring comfort to me as well. <laughs> I can't explain why. Even this one where my head is not fully covered brings more comfort to me, it makes me happy. Um, and maybe that's not a good enough reason for some people, but for me it is. But in any sense, it's definitely something that I'm going to continue doing because I'm very pulled to it. And yeah, in my personal practice, my veiling is not for modesty. So I am okay if people see my hair. Um, I am okay to wear more revealing clothes. For me, veiling is a reclamation of personal power, a reclamation of my energy. It is representative of my spirituality. And for men, my spirituality, in a lot of ways, is reclamation of self-love and personal power in the same way that, you know, a lot of people may find in witchcraft. And yeah, that's most of my notes for this. Um, I also want to show you some of the veils that I use, and I will have examples for how I use them. Okay, so currently, I don't have a dresser. So they're in my closet. I have some veils that a lot of people have seen me wearing, um, but there are a lot of different types of veils here. I'm gonna start with my cotton, cotton ones. So these are my cotton bandanas. I typically wear white, black, red underneath my silk veils. Um, you will see on the inside of this, there are two sigils. You can kind of see them. You may be able to see it better on the black one. Do I have a sigil on? I should. There it is. This is in red. It is banishing of negative energy, so I will typically wear these 
embroidered sigils under my silk veils, which look like one of them looks like this. This is one of my red, one of my red ones. It's very big, they're square. Boop, boop. Love it. Um, this is another cotton one that I haven't embroidered yet. I gotta get the wrinkles out. Um, the cotton ones will come a little rigid, but that's okay. The more you wear them, the more they will get used to your head, the more they will stretch out. Some days I still opt for a bandana. Um, today I am wearing one of my favorite veils in a different fashion. I got this from Olivia, the Witch of Wonderlust. I did a video with her. It'll be up at some point on her channel, but this is just pulled here and tied and then pulled over and tied in the back. Um, so then I have a lot of veils that I will wear. This is not silk, it's more polyester. Um, basically how I wear this one is I will send a picture to my editor to put in, is I put the beginning here and I pull the little uh, end into the back, into the knot, so it forms kind of a cap over my head. Um, to me, that's very comfortable. It's very much what I enjoy. I have lots of veils that I'll do that with. This one is from my mother, like this one from Greece. It's sparkly. I love sparkly things. This is another one, like similar to the polyester one. This uh, is wrinkly. This is another favorite veil. This one is, I don't even know what it's made of but this I also got from my mother. Um, another veil. Um, so some of my favorite veils that I have are these solid colored uh, silk ones. These were a gift from my friend in Singapore. I have a pink one too. I don't know where my pink one is. Um, here's another one, same fabric, similar fabric, but patterned. Um, you probably see me wearing this green one a lot. As you can see, I literally recently just pulled it off my head so you can still see like how I wore it. Here's the duck. There's a knot. Strands. Oh. Here's my ooh, duck veil. Quack, quack, bitches. <laughs> and then this piece of fabric is my longest, biggest piece of fabric. It starts here, ends here. Um, and I use this for a himateon or just something that you'll see me wearing a lot in my YouTube videos because I'm home, I don't need to do a whole uh, veiling setup to go out. So I will just toss it over my head like this. Example. Um, I also sometimes unfold it and will put it like as a pala. Um, but this is kind of what you typically will see me where sometimes I twist it too for YouTube videos because mm, I'm still being perceived and a lot of times it's a nice protective shield. Um, this is also one of my favorite veils. It's super comfy, it's super pretty, it goes with a lot of things. It's patterned, but so you can see, I just kind of set it right here on the crown of my head and the two strands are put here and here. You can also pin them like this. Um, and yeah, I just kind of wear that when I'm not going out. Um, there's another veil I have, silk type veil. Um, I also wear this as a full head covering. Um, it just depends on what you get that day. <laughs> it really does. Because sometimes I wake up and I'm like, you know what, I want to do a full veil today. And some days I wake up and I'm like, no, I don't. I want to do a partial veil today. Um, but yeah, that is my video on veiling. Thank you so much for watching. Um, if you stay till the end of the video, you already know how I feel about you. If you want, you can like, comment, subscribe, turn the bell on, but absolutely no pressure. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Remember to drink water. Sabenedica.